Okay. Sto nel bio la cannonata. Cosa? Sto nel bio la cannonata. Quando... Signor Baro, posso mettermi lì ti danno noia? No, no, non mi dà niente. Devi fare qualcosa? No, no, quello è il schermo di fila. Ah, oh, bonbon. Viene con il percorso strano. Ci sono da qualche parte quattro e quinta di favore. Quattro e quinta. Sì. Ok. Devo cercare qualcosa. Okay, guys, we're live on Facebook. Oh, okay, live stream. Got it. Okay. And I'm going to let everyone in. Hello, everyone. This is Sheila. Are you Vero? Uh, we're uh, live uh, with um, uh, Aldo Clerigo and, and Jacqueline uh, Mitchell from a uh, trattoria in uh, Piedmont, Italy. Start video. Got it. <laughs> hey, Patty. Okay, we're on. Or I'm on. <laughs> That's my beautiful daughter. <laughs> yes, mom. So, uh, I'm if you can, um, because they should mute me. Yeah. Right? Okay, so this is um, Aldo Cl Clerico. This is yeah. the winemaker, the wine producer. Mom, mom. And this is Sheila. Hey, please Sheila. Please. Hi. I can't. If you, Patty, if you can just mute They've yourself. Got me muted. So that way, you can, um, you yeah. can just kick off. And I then, really um, mute myself, but I can't. There's Sheila. You were, you were muted for and a moment. Hey, mom. Sheila. Um, hey. <laughs> Mom, That's my wine distributor mom, from Gloria. You need, mom, you need and to then, mute yourself. You're not muted. This is one of right. her, Sheila's clients. And that's mom, my... Mom, I think I, I, think I just muted okay. her. Perfect. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, thanks everyone for joining us. Um, I'm just going to wait to see uh, more, more people... Um, uh, as they're, they're coming in, because I have to uh, let everyone in. Um, but as I uh, said uh, before, my name is Sheila Donahue. I'm founder of Vero, and uh, we uh, we go around the, um, the the world seeking small uh, wine producers as well as olive oil uh, uh, farmers farmers as well that make really good products that aren't yet uh, in the U.S. And then we, um, we we import them in, and then we sell. The, their wines and olive oils to businesses and consumers across the U.S. Our website is verovinogusto.com. And, um, and today we have a, a really, uh, really special, uh, uh, eat, well, we're, I'm in Italy, so is Aldo and, uh, and Jackie. So it's evening for us and daytime for, for uh, most of you. But um, yeah, but it's a special, uh, a special evening uh, that we have today. Um, for me personally, it's uh, it's special. I uh, I met uh, Aldo Clerigo during a year of sabbatical in 2017. I was at a wine fair in in Germany, and uh, and I saw I saw Aldo just kind of sitting alone at a stand and, and a conversation. 
And, um, you know, and since then we, of course, we get in touch and I imported his wines. And, um, <clears throat> uh, and then Jackie, I know through her mom, um, Patty, who's also oh. on the Zoom. And, um, and Patty, okay, so this is just the card now. I'm just going to be muting. Um, I haven't um, figured out the, how to get the audio yet. And the, okay, well, you had audio last night. I'm not going to be any. Yeah. Okay, I I can mute I can mute you too just to, in case um, you're having problems muting yourselves, but um, uh, but in any case, um, Jack Jackie uh, J Jackie I know through her mom Patty who's also on on the Zoom today, and um and and Jackie and I met in 2018, and um she she has a, a pretty cool story or family as well. They're actually, uh, they have a small winery in, um, in Ventura County in California. That's actually how, how I know them. But, um, but actually Jack, Jackie's been uh, living in Italy for uh, close to 10 years now. And she went to, to cooking school in, um, in Piedmont, Italy. And then, and then she got a job with this really well-known uh, trattoria which is Trattoria Risorgimento. That's where uh, that's where they are live today, and um, and so so tonight today's event I think is is for me personally really really nice because it's kind of um, putting together an intersection of of people that I know that are passionate about wine and food like uh, like Aldo and and Jackie. And then, um, and then you, all of you as well that are on, um, that are on the, uh, on the, the Zoom. And I know there are some of you also that might, might be watching from Facebook as well. Uh, another just kind of cool story for some of you that might not even be aware. Hey, <laughs> but um, two years ago, um, uh, Aldo um, Clarigo and his wife, uh, Valentina Conferno, um, uh, came to the U.S. for the first time, and it was uh, so. It was fe February two years ago in New York, and um, and we, you know, I enjoyed myself myself a lot. I think Aldo and Valentina did as well, and we um, we did some wine tastings. And some of the people that are on today's Zoom also was was, was part of the uh, of that uh, this one, one wine tasting that we did. So. So it's kind of like a reunion of sorts today, and um, and we'll we'll be tasting um, the full the full gamut of, of Aldo's wines. Um, I just wanted to say that um, you know even though you're you're muted, um, if you have a question, just feel free to unmute yourself. You know, ask the question. It's it's a uh, it's a uh, an hour of um, of cooking and exploration of, uh, of the wine um, that Aldo makes that's in the, the Lang area. And um, uh, so we wanna make this interactive. Um, you know, we don't have like a, a really set, <clears throat> you know, strict agenda um, other than um, uh, tasting the wines and Jackie's gonna be showing you some, some dishes. Um, and, um, and yeah, I mean, um, any sound? I, yeah. I also I don't have any have sound. A lot of um, questions prepared necessarily for Aldo. I don't have any because sounds. I want you know I want you and guys I know to I have you know, sound and it's not um, me. You know to uh, oh. you know to also ask good questions as well. Um, there it is. So, Hi Sheila. Hey Noni. It's nice to see you. How are you? Hey Kevin. Hi. Hey, so, uh, so where um, where is the Lang? So if you look at the slide um, that I'm showing, you'll see okay. that uh, the Lang is in Piedmont. Um, mm -hmm. That's the region all the way to the north uh, northwest of, of Italy, um, near the French border. And um, and then the Lang. Okay. Is an area that's uh, within um, within Piedmont. So it's this. Uh, if you look where my um, 
pointer is it's this um, darker area where you see Loreto and Lange written here. And so, <clears throat> so the Lange is in the southern part of, uh, of the Piedmont region. And <clears throat> um, it's a, an area that's known to make uh, some of the best uh, red wines in the world. <laughs> so, so that's why I, uh, I encourage you to, you know, ask questions today, um, you know, as we're, um, you know, we're just going through the, the let's say this mini class and, uh, and wine tasting. But um, in any case, you'll see <clears throat> here on, on this slide um, that uh, where uh, Jackie is, right now, and, and Aldo is at the Trattoria di Risorgimento, that's in Treiso. So, um, so just uh, west of Treiso is Alba. So Alba is considered sort of the, the uh, center um, uh, of, of the Lange. And, um, uh, and then if you just go south of, of Alba, um, and you drive past the town of Barolo, and you get to this town called Monforte d'Alba, and that's Alba's home. Um, oh. he, grew, he grew up in the middle of a uh, of wine country, um, Barolo wow. wine country. So he has uh, vineyards surrounding his home, um, and uh, and so that's where. Um, for example, his uh, Nebbiolo vineyards. Nebbiolo is a grape. That's the grape also that's used to make Barolo. So that's where um, uh, where his uh, Nebbiolo vineyards are, um, as well as his Barbera his Barbera vineyards. He also makes it the Barbera yep. d'Alba. And um, and then his hmm. wife is uh, Valentina Conterno. Conterno. Um, is a well-known uh, last name in uh, in the Barolo uh, wine region, just as Clarigo is. So, so Aldo and uh, and uh, Valentina come from like let's say dynasties of of uh, you could say of of, of wine wine families. Um, and uh, and so Valentina's um, uh, mom basically uh, has a vineyard. In the Genestra crew, which is um, a, a Nebbiolo vineyard to make Barolo wines, so uh, so that's also known for Forte d'Alba, um, and and then just a little bit south of Monforte d'Alba is this town called Doliani, and that's where um, that's where Aldo's uh, uh, Doliani um, vineyard is. It's a uh, Tacci Dolcetto is the grape. Um, but the town is called Loyani as well as the Appalachian. And then, um, and then if you just go a little bit north of uh, Monforte d'Alba, there's a town called Setalunga d'Alba, and that's where Aldo, um, Aldo's Barolo Serralunga comes from. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, um, so just to give you an idea of what, what it looks like um, in Basically, right. This this is a picture I took uh, when I visited Aldo in um, in uh, in December. Um, so um, you know he's surrounded by by vineyards. This, these are Nebbiolo vineyards here. You see that it's hilly, and then there's also mountains um, as well. Um, so it's uh, it's an area <clears throat> that you know just has a lot going for it when it comes to um, um, cultivating grapes and making wine. So um, so anyway, I um, I don't want to um, <clears throat> talk too much because I know some of you have wine to taste. <laughs> <while we're here. laughs> um, so I'm going to. Um, here, go I'm going to stop showing my um, my screen, but I'll I'll just show, want to make sure that you see the wines that we'll be tasting. Um, so uh, these are almost all of Aldo's wines that he makes. The one um, there's one one missing, and I'll, I'll I'll tell you in a minute which one um, that uh, that is. But he makes um, a uh, Aldoliani. Um, 
that's made from the Dol Dolcetto grape. So we'll be tasting that first. And then he makes the Barbera, the Dalba. So we'll be tasting that. And then we're, we're gonna move to his, his ne Nebbiolo wine. So um, we'll start with the, the uh, Lang Nebbiolo, which is, I, I call it a baby Barolo. So it's uh, from um, uh, the vineyards that were designated to make Barolo from it. Um, but Aldo decides for this particular wine that he doesn't age the, uh, he decides to not to age the wine as much as a Barolo would. And, and so it's classified as a Lang Nebbiolo. <clears throat> and, then, and then Aldo makes three Barolos. So um, the Barolo from, his, um, from his, his, the vineyards around his home, um, the Barolo Genestra, which is his um, mother-in-law's uh, vineyard, and then the Barolo uh, from, um, from Cerro Lunga. So, uh, so just to clarify, from the, the Lang Nebbiolo, all the way to all the Barolos, those are 100% um, Nebbiolo wines. So, um, okay, so that was the spiel. <laughs> Just wanted to kind of get everyone kind of centered um, and on the same page. So, um, so let's start tasting. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we're gonna. We're gonna start. Um, I, don't, I don't see uh, okay. Patty's screen because I know she has a bunch of people. Patty uh, said she can't hear anything. She's on, but she can't hear anything. Well, Maybe you have the mute, mute yeah. on, Patty. I don't, I don't see her. Are you talking on. to me, this Patty? No, uh, sorry. Patty <laughs> Damon. Another okay. Patty. Okay. Uh, the Patty and the Florida crew. Mm -hmm. So I saw them come on the screen and then they seem to have disappeared momentarily. Yeah. Ah, there, there's another there. I think. All right. Well, I know they're on the. There you are, Pat, uh, Patty. Okay. Yeah, there's two Patties. <laughs> Can you see us? Yeah. No. I can't. Oh, you can. You just tried. Okay, she disappeared. Well, in okay. any case, we're going to start with the oh, Dilliani. Yeah. There she is. There you are. So, um, uh, so the Dogliani is made from the Dol Dolcetto grape. Uh, the Dolcetto grape is known to have um, lower acidity and higher tannins. Um, and, um, so, so Aldo. Okay, I'm here. Hello, everybody. I'm uh, Aldo Clerico from Monforte. I'm a young winemaker. I start to make wine in 2004 because uh, first I was a count, but I don't like too much this job. Every day closing an office is not for me. And I decided to change life. Me, I'm very lucky because my parents have a vigna. They produce grape, but they don't make wine. In 2004, I start me to make wine. The first one is Dogliani. We make with the Dolcetto grapes, but uh, in another village, not in Monforte, but in another village called Monchiero. Because my, more, my cellar and my vineyard, the Mostara, are in the village of Monforte, they are of Barolo. But me, I am at the borderline of the village. And uh, very near my, in another village, I have less one hectare, and uh, in this hectare, yes. I have Dolcetto. With this Dolcetto, we make Dogliani. Some years ago, we have another name. He called uh, Dolcetto of Dogliani, but uh, he have a bad name because more people think uh, Dolcetto, Dolce, sweet wine. <clears throat> and the people he don't like too much. But uh, Dolcetto, the name Dolcetto is not for the wine because Dolcetto is not a sweet wine but for the grapes, because uh, during the harvest, you come here and eating the grapes of Dolcetto, Barbera and Nebbiolo, the best to eat is Dolcetto, because Dolcetto have uh, less acidity than Barbera, less tanning than uh, Nebbiolo, and when you eating, we have more sensation of sugar, okay? Huh. And uh, this Dolcetto, we make in, in uh, for us, is a daily wine. 
Normally, dolcetto have uh, no more tannin, no more acidity, more fruit. For us, it's a daily wine to drink every day. The new vintage is not every day because it's, alcohol is more 14.5 alcohol. For dolcetto, it's too more, too much. But uh, it's not me, but it depends on the climate. Dolcetto not to stay in wood, only in steel tank. And normally, um, next year our, after harvest, we put in bottle and then we start to sold. A very fruit wine, no more stronger, uh, perfect to drink every day. Are you with me? <laughs> no, I, I just, sorry, I was sipping back there. <laughs> But it, it's I really enjoy, I, I really enjoyed this one. I love the color of it. It's um oh. no for wow. dolcetto, yeah. I love this one. I think it's gonna go great in the uh in the first dish that we're making. <laughs> I think it'll be good. <laughs> but um very nice. Yeah. Love this wine, I really do. Uh, thank you very much. But the best work is not me in the cellar, but is me in the vineyard. Because uh -huh. uh, I, uh, first to start to work, I work in some cellar in Mayara. For example, I work uh, from Domenico Clerico uh, for one more one year. And uh, I learn a very simple rules. To make a good wine is very easy with a good grapes. With a bad grapes, it's impossible to make a good wine. And for this, we have more and more cure in Dina. We have less grapes during the summer. We go to Dina and we cut the grapes because it's more probably uh, the, the, every, every plant have more grapes. And we don't need the quantity, but we need the quality. After we are up the weather, it's possible the weather are okay or not. But for me, I'm not the uh, non posso partire niente. No, no, it's not possible to control the weather, unfortunately, <laughs> as we've seen this year. It's been a little weird. Let's just say I looked outside yesterday and today, and I thought Punxsutawney Phil got it wrong, <laughs> or he doesn't have control in Italy, one or the other. Not sure which yet, but. Uh, So yeah, should I uh, get started on the first wine or the first dish? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so some of you, uh, if you subscribe to our blog, um, we uh, we already started to publish some of the recipes that that uh, Jackie's uh, making today. Um, maybe some of you have have made made it yourself. Uh, if so, l let us know. <laughs> Um, and, um, so yeah, Jackie, you want to start talking about the first dish? Okay. So yeah. the first, uh, the first dish this evening is a simple risotto. Um, we've dubbed Ooh. this risotto al aldo clerico <laughs> because ah. a risotto is made with white wine, uh, to deglaze the plan oh. in the, to deglaze, deglaze the pan. In this case, we're going to be using Sounds red good. wine. This gives the wine, the the right the risotto a little bit of color, a little bit of different flavors, and in this dish, really, I think just about any of Aldo's wines would be great to use. Depending on the, you know, what do you want to call the dish? Do you want it to be risotto al Barolo, risotto al Barbera, or I think tonight we'll make it risotto al Dogliani. So <laughs> we're starting off here with uh, the pan. With a little bit of oil. Can you let Pat back in? She got locked out again. Can you let her in? Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, wait, no, she's still there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So. Start off with your base for risotto, which is going to be onion. I pre chopped it here. And you're going to want to get, get it nice and soft. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Don't worry about it. I'll eat. 
She's Another having... important aspect of risotto is to toast the rice. So we add a little bit of onion to give it a little bit of flavor. And then mm -hmm. it's what's important is the risotto is not supposed to be a boiled rice like you would think of um, maybe at a Chinese restaurant where it's it's boiled and it's very soft and it's it's a mild flavor that's meant to be uh, a side to the sauces that are, are there. So instead, the rice itself is the dish. And it's important to keep each kiko or each grain of rice mm -hmm. on kind of its own uh, separate, as its own separate thing, like a piece of pasta. For this, we, we start off with um, carnaroli rice. Car carnaroli, yeah. Carnaroli, yes. <laughs> carnaroli rice, because it's got a little bit of a, the, the, the gray has a little bit easier to keep um, separate. And then we're going to be toasting it. So I have my rice, I've already measured it out here. My onion is soft. I'll add that in. And now I'll begin to toast my rice, mixing it in with the uh, onion. I get it. This will help the rice to create kind of like a crust. And while it's cooking, it'll always maintain a little bit of integrity and shape and not, not become too mushy. For that reason, I also have back here a pot of boiling broth that I do not have a Lego for. Yeah, we Boiling broth will help to keep the rice as I cook it at an even temperature, never getting too cool, never cooling down, and it'll allow it to really cook at, a, at an even temperature and create a good product. So your rice will be toasted when it's hot to touch. It doesn't, you don't want it to burn you or begin to burn the rice. So now I am going to. Let's turn on. Getting on when she's doing something that comes up. Okay. We have an, uh, a fire sensor that turns off our gas line if there's too much alcohol. Oh. So oh. I have to turn on the, the hood to keep the air circulating so I don't lose my gas. Because if I have to call Joelle to turn the gas on, he'll kill me. <laughs> well, here we go. Well, we'll see us. Whoever's talking will show up. <laughs> Blazing the plan here. This is where, for a normal risotto, you would use white wine. Did anyone make this dish? No. This and cooks off a little bit. We're going to start adding broth, but you don't want to add too much at once because otherwise it gets that boiled flavor. So we add just a, a little bit at a time to allow it to cook, but never boil. So it's always just it's almost sauteed, and it'll be about 14 to 15 minutes now until it's cooked. So. I don't know if we want to taste another wine while this is going. Yeah. Or... Sure. Yeah, let's move to the uh, Barbera. Okay. Anyone have anyone have the Barbera? Yep. Patty, how you do this, Steve? Good. So Barbera, um, is uh, kind of like the opposite, if you will, of uh, Goyani. Um, so uh, it has high acidity and low, low tannins. Um, so Aldo, why don't you take it away? Tell us about this wine. Okay, the second wine is Barbera d'Alba and we make in the village of Monforte d'Alba. Uh, my Barbera, when it's young, is very acid, more acidity, more difficult to drink when it's young, it's problem, uh, it's possible when you taste a young Barbera, problem of stomach edge. And for this, uh, we prefer putting wood for one year or more, because the wood change a little bit. The tannin become a little bit more soft, more sweet, and the cover the sensation of the acidity. Uh, Barbera, is a 
a very good wine. And uh, in this period, with the change climate, have more and more alcohol than a normal. For example, this year is uh, the new vintage is uh, 16, one six percent of alcohol is too much. And uh, we have a more problem for uh, finish the fermentation. <clears throat> Normally, we don't use anything for the fermentation. It's a natural. But this year we knew we use some yeast, yeast. 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 for finish the fermentation because uh, if I don't use Barbera, stay sweet. Normally we don't use anything. This year we need to use because we don't want to make it with Barbera. And uh, Barbera stay more time in wood, some part in barrack and some part in barrel. After one year, we put it together and we put in butter. Oh, wow. A uh, question for Aldo? Yeah. Uh, Barbera you get from Alba and you get Barbera from Asti. And Dolcetto you get from Doliani and you get from Alba. What are the differences in the sites? Uh, with the same grapes, it's possible to make different wine. For example, Nebbiolo, for example. We make Roero, Langenebbiolo, Barolo, and Barbaresco. The grapes are the same, but uh, we make a different wine because it depends where is the vigna. For example, in my, <clears throat> in my village, Agaro Barolo, and with the best uh, vigna of Nebbiolo, we make Barolo. In Maiara, it's impossible to make Barbaresco because Monforte is one of the villages of the Arab Barolo. We are at the moment, we are in Traeso with the best grape of Nebbiolo, we make Barbaresco, not Barolo, because Traeso is one of the village of the Ara of Barbaresco. And the dolcetto are the same. Uh, me, I make another kind of dolcetto, you don't uh, have, but me, I make dolcetto d'alba and dogliani. The grapes are the same. But Dolcetto d'Alba, we make in the village of Monforte. And with the Dolcetto grapes in Monforte, we make Dolcetto d'Alba. <coughs> in another villa called Montiero, with the same grapes, I can make Dolcetto d'Alba, but uh, I make Dogliani. Because <clears throat> when I put a new vigna, come to me to organize and control. He decides is a good exposition or not. And about this, he decide. okay, this is a very good disposition for the sun. Okay, perfect for Barolo. This is not too much good. You can't make Barolo, but you make Lange Nebbiolo or Nebbiolo d'Alba. You understand? Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. And um, when, um, for example, for Barolo or Barbaresco, we only use the best vine in the north, uh, exposition, we don't make Barolo or Barbaresco, only in the south, sud. Okay. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> for Dolcetto, is the same, hmm? same grapes, but a different wine. And Barbera are the same because uh, we have uh, Barbera d'Alba, Barbera d'Asti, Nizza. Barbera d'Alba Superiore, Dusty Superiore, we have a lot of wine. It depends what is the other production of the grapes. Mm -hmm. I think you right. also will taste a, a, a difference um, in, in the wines um, that it's more subtle, um, but depending upon where, where the grape you know, is, is cultivated you'll you will notice a difference in you know in the uh in, in a let's say barbera, barbera d'alba versus barbera d'asti aldo was that in general um does a barbera d'alba taste different than a barbera d'asti allora i really different because uh, first when in, uh, in one hectare of Barbera d'Alba, we make less grapes than Barbera d'Asti. Oh. Mm -hmm. You understand? And yeah. this, 
Intensive. Normally, mm -hmm. we have uh, less uh, graves in uh, Barbera d'Alba than Barbera d'Alba. But normally, Barbera d'Alba are more powerful and uh, more stronger than Barbera mm. d'Alba because you make too much uh, graves than us. Uh, I think uh, it changing. It make less graves. It's okay, but uh, not so much. Uh, why maker he make uh, less graves? He uh, make too much. Uh, me and uh, my other winemaker, we want uh, quality. Um, we have uh, less graves uh, for each plant. Uh, we don't need too much. Uh, in Fromasti, more people have different idea. You want to make quantity. A very small winemaker, he make uh, quality. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a different, uh, a very different. Thank you. Non c'era mica produttore dell'astigiano. Ok, no, loro ne fanno di più di noi. Noi eh? Il problema di quella di Asti è che loro ne fanno di più un po' acidosa e acida. Mm. I, they just say, I, I, you know, I really like this Barbera. I've tasted Aldo's wine. Um, his, you know, when um, he invited me up to his cantina a couple months ago. And what I really like about this Barbera is how fruity it is compared to other barberas that you can find. Sometimes they can they can be really acidic. They yes. can be a little bit difficult to drink almost, yes. where this one is just so easy to to enjoy, to mm. to have but, uh, uh, nice flavors yeah. in and everything. But, uh, barbera, my Barbera, for example, when he's young, is more acid. They have the same problem for drink is very difficult. And for this, I prefer put in wood because it's changing too much. Me, I'm free to use wood or not. Every winemaker for some wine are free, for some other are some rules and the stop. For Barbera, you are free to decide yes or no. For my tasting, I prefer stay more time in wood because it's changing too much. It become more powerful, more fluid. Everything of this cover a little bit your sensation of the acidity, but the acidity there are, but they would cover a little bit this acidity, more acidity. Should we go to the next one? Yeah. Um, with the risotto, to explain a few things, if that's okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. My rice is almost done cooking here. So the next part of this recipe that really brings out the lange is using a local cheese known as tuma piemontese. And a tuma, uh, there's lots of different types of tuma, first of all. However, this one um, that comes most traditionally in this big wheel is a mild flavor, kind of like a Monterey Jack type flavor. And it, it gives a little bit of a uh, little bit of extra flavor to the risotto, gives a little bit of extra creaminess. So I've already cubed here a slice of it. You can see kind of a little bit smaller than your typical dice. So I'm going to put some of it in now that the rice is almost done cooking. I'm going to go ahead and put this in, keeping a few cubes to the side for garnish. But we're just going to mix this in and start to let it melt here. So that um, as the rice finishes cooking, we'll get the cheese nice and creamy and melty. And then we'll begin the last stage of a risotto, which is called the, which is called mantecato. And the mixture of the starches of the rice with different fats to help create a creamy texture and once again create that, that, that typical risotto feeling. So to do that, you mix in a lot of butter. Yo. Mm -hmm. That's good. And then some parmigiano reggiano. I've uh, already grated ahead of time. Some parmigiano, you can use grana padano, if you would like. Okay, and then put this together. And during this period where you're manticando the rice, 
you um, you want to stir a lot to make sure that you're really mixing those starches together and you can really see it just become more creamy. So just uh, if you want to hear something funny, I was talking with uh, not not your your mom uh, um, Patty, but uh, my uh, friend Patty in Florida, and we were exchanging um, texts about what to what she was going to prepare um, for for this uh, tasting, and she said, "Oh no, risotto takes too much time to cook." And I said, "Well, it's unfortunate that." The football season finished because it's probably the perfect dish to make while you're watching a football game or something, right? You just have to keep stirring and stirring. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> well, here we're just about all of that cooked down. All right. It's actually really not that well. Okay, I'm going to plate it up here. Three plates because I have my video tech behind the scenes that's helping me out. <laughs> oh, we lost the back picture of this one. So Aldo's going to try it too, right? Even though he's probably. Uh, I told him yesterday, come hungry. <laughs> no. Okay. And we'll finish it off with our cubes here of gulma. And it's ready to serve. So I don't know if you guys can see it here in the video. It's I don't want it to slide off the plate, but it's a beautiful, <laughs> color. beautiful, beautiful color. Aldo, if you oh, want, to, why not? You are just a jato in banana. There we go. And uh, I'll dig in on this side. Perfecto. Ah, sir. Sí. Bonito. <laughs> Okay. And, and uh, Jackie, uh, um, well, maybe what I'll, I'll just tell pe the people uh, watching that I, I went uh, to visit Jackie. Um, in January, and um, and Jackie uh, collaborates with us in addition to uh, being a chef, uh, and um, you know, so I thought I knew her pretty well. And then we're, you know, we're kind of going around having meetings and and whatnot, and all of a sudden I I, I hear her saying words that I don't know, and, uh, and I realized that she she learned the. The dialect, the Piemontese dialect, working in the kitchen there. So wow. she's like, she has this full, you know, very authentic experience. Um, and what was one of one of the words was goy, right? Sorry, what word? One of the words was goy. Goy. So yeah, yeah. Um, goy is like. Godere, no, it's it's kind of like yeah. It means like to enjoy, and so. <laughs> Is it with the G or V? Say, sorry? Is it with the G? Yes. Yes. Oh, I don't it's, spelling is difficult for me because Piemontese I, I learned in the kitchen. So I, I I have no clue how to write it or spell it because I never have seen it written or spelled. I've only heard it. And so it's you know, in fact, it's one of those things that every once in a while a word will escape. And I don't realize that it's Piemontese. <laughs> so my, my boyfriend doesn't speak Piemontese. He just speaks Italian. And every once in a while, he'll look at me and say, I don't know what you just said. And I'll realize, oh, well, that's a word. <laughs> so it, 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 creates, it creates a little bit of interesting uh, 
spark in my conversations. If you never know, what word is she going to pull out? So, uh -huh. so how would you how would you use oh boy? How would you use use that in a phrase? Or goy. Il riso mi fa goi. Questo riso mi fa goi. Eh. Sì, io mi fa piacere. You would say like I like it. You know, wow, this is really good. I'm enjoying it. It would say use it with um use it with you know it right <laughs> well, I don't think when it comes naturally and you don't think about it we're both struggling quello quello risotto lo sto guardando mi fa goi però è mi fa nel senso i like too much i want yeah so how, how would you how would you use it though in a phrase you would just it say sounds boy like is it where you use yummy right instead of yummy Yummy, come like a uh, sì, come buono, delizioso. Sì, ma neanche, no. È più, no. It's, it's a little bit more of a. Uh, more gusto. Delizioso, sì, delizioso. it's almost like more of a treat, something that's more of a treat, more. Mm -hmm. More, it's more than just delicious. It's it's got it's it's difficult to to try. <laughs> No, 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 no. In Italian, there's not a direct translation no. that I'm aware of. <laughs> no, that's why. Even... <laughs> yeah, right. Most of the people. <laughs> yeah. So, but um, no, the Piemontese is is fun. There's you know, there's a few words like you know, it's not vino but vin. 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 <laughs> it's like, not okay. brodo. It's broad uh, instead of broth. Um, Cipolla, onion is shula. And the, the dialect also, it, it changes from town to town. It's based on an old, the old uh, system in Italian where it's, Italy wasn't even unified until 1861. And so, you know, I've talked with friends of mine that live near Torino and they don't understand me when I use the Piemontese. It's, but um, it's, Piemontese changes too much from, from different data. For example, me, I'm from Lange, from the other Ara Roero, some uh, words are very different than me. Uh, people near the border from France, for me, are difficult to understand because they speak <laughs> dialect, but uh, from France, not from uh, Italy, are, are changed too much. Mm -hmm. In the same uh, different uh, 10, 15 kilometers, changed too much. And for me, from the Les, Les, Les Alpes, are very difficult to understand because they speak dialect, but uh, influential from uh, France. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's very difficult to understand. Yeah. So, Coniglio, perro. Lapin, 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 porro, porro, change, change too much. For There's the same uh, name, it's possible different. Uh, different words based yes. on where you are and, and different accents as well, different way, different pronunciations of it. Um, here, at the, the family that I work for here, the mother is from Trezo. And the father is from an area called the Roero, which is across the Tainaro River that divides <clears throat> kind of this area. And Mariuccia speaks all the time about when she married Ilario and she had to move from Trezo to Baldicero d'Alba in the Roero, she talks about how she had difficulty sometimes finding something because maybe that word was different. So she, she always tells me a story about having to go out and buy shoelaces. And now the word for shoelaces is not coming to mind, but she, she couldn't find the shoelaces because she only knew the word in the Albese, Trezo, Piemontese. She didn't know it in the Roero, Piemontese. And no one was helping her until finally someone that knew also how the Trezo Piemontese was able to tell her what it was and she could buy her shoelaces. So. That's very strange. It's, it's... For example, cacalin, do you know what Cacalin? Cacalin, no. Quello non ho mai sentito. No, I haven't ever. You in braccio con le gambe qui. Ah, oh, sì? E tu ti tieni qua. Ah, davvero? Cacalin. Cacalin. Non ho mai sentito. Eh, Pro Royal is a caraboccia. Caraboccia. <laughs> 
Got a book, Jeff. Okay. okay. I know what a kind of book. Okay. Kakali. I guess. I've, okay. I've never heard Kakali. I've always heard I've always heard Kakali. Okay. okay. Because of the Are different. The Royero from Malange are very different. It's uh, a kind of to take something. Like a piggyback. Okay. Like a piggyback, kind of. To carry it. And uh, in Mayara is Kakalin uh, from Roero, uh, 10 kilometers to me. Carabocha are the same, but are different uh, pronunciation. Yeah. Are very different. Oh. It's too strange. <laughs> anyway, okay. should we move on to so, the next? Oh, sorry. Yeah. So we're going to move on to uh, the Nebbiolos. So um, first the Lange Nebbiolo and then the Barolos. So um, so if you, if you remember, um, I mentioned the, the first wine, uh, Dogliani, which is made from the Dolcetto grape, has lower uh, acidity and more tannins. And Barbera is the opposite. So it has high acidity and low tannins. So the Nebbiolo grape, is actually sort of like the, you know, uh, what is that, the, the gold, Goldilocks fairy tale when she tries the, the oatmeal. It's like, you know, it's just right. Let's just do that <laughs> way. Um, so it has uh, a good amount of acidity and a good amount of tannins. And it's oh. considered a, a, a grape that produces age-worthy wines. So hence, you know, why Barolo is, is so... Uh, you know, so well known and, and uh, considered one of the best red wines in the world. <clears throat> but the <clears throat> the Lang Nebbiolo is that Aldo makes is from a vineyard that's um, classified as a Barolo vineyard. Um, yes, uh, he, he makes it as a, a Lang Nebbiolo. Uh, my Nebbiolo we make with the young vineyard Nebbiolo from Barolo because all my vineyard if don't wait in three years in the cellar, you don't uh, call with the name Barolo, but I call with the name Lange Nebbiolo. A small part of my Barolo, we will become a Barolo about three years. I decided to start to sold the first, the holding, and I call with the name Lange Nebbiolo because all my wine, for example, this year, uh, when I cut the grapes, I can call with the name Barolo. I, I write, Nebbiolo, we will become Barolo because uh, Nebbiolo to become Barolo need the minimum three years to stay in the cellar. Two years in wood and one year. At the last year, every one maker are free to decide more wood in bottle or in tank. My Lange Nebbiolo, he don't, uh, my Nebbiolo, used to Lange Nebbiolo, I have to stay three years in my cellar. I start to sell the first three years and they call with the name Lange Nebbiolo. Normally, uh, for this wine, I use the young vineyard from the Biola from Barolo because the young vineyard have a less bit color, perfume structure than the older. But uh, this wine I started to make in 2004. At the moment, they have more here. Are not, are not the older, but are not too much younger. But I continue to make uh, this wine because I think uh, it's a good... Transport uh, uh, It's a good... Uh, um, it's a good balance between the price and quality. Okay. And uh, the base of this wine is Nebbiolo, the grape of Nebbiolo from Barolo. And uh, when uh, the wine is young, are very green tanning, very aggressive. And for this, Lange Nebbiolo stay more one year in wood, some part in barrack and some part in barrel. And about one year in wood, the tanning become a little bit soft, not too much because the characterize on the Biolo are tanning, more tanning, but uh, about one year it become a little bit more soft and uh, is uh, okay for drink. In my Lange and Biolo, in all the wine with the name Lange, it's possible to put some other grapes, a 10%, I think, I don't, I don't know, but me, in my Lange and Biolo, I use only the Biolo grapes and the stop because the name is Nebbiolo. If I want to make a blend, I call uh, with a fantasy name and I make. But for me, Lange Nebbiolo is only Lange Nebbiolo and the stop. Thank you very much. Is anyone else uh, tasting? Yes. Mariana? I think, uh, oh, um, and then no, you too, good. Nebbiolo, the color Nebbiolo, are not so much darker. Barbera, 
uh, d'oggetto are more darker. The characterize of nebbiolo are not, the color are not so much darker. And for this, during a fermentation, nebbiolo stay more and more time than the other because we need to catch more color from the skin of the grapes. When finish a fermentation, the skin of Barbera nebbiolo are violet. Uh, when nebbiolo skin are brown because we need to take more and more color because nebbiolo have no more color and we need to more extraction of these. My language nebbiolo thing is a little Barolo. No? Maybe Barolo. It's a little Barolo, it's a brother of Barolo. <laughs> okay. That's it. I like it a lot. So. <laughs> Should um, we move on to the next recipe or start with one of the Barolos? Okay. Uh, no, no, no. Move, move on. Um, yeah. Yeah. Rest recipe? Yes. yes yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the next recipe is called filetto al barolo, and that is um, and that is so filetto is like a beef tenderloin. So here is half of one. Um, you can see kind of the way it's shaped, the tenderloin of you know you're gonna get in your filet mignon is coming from this part in here. Your your traditional filet mignon. So I've got a couple slices already pre-sliced here. Um, they're about one inch thick, you can't see well. And um, I'm gonna cook them up. So we start by browning. I've got the butter. We start by browning and butter. I've got butter already melted here. So I'm gonna get that nice and hot while I dredge these in flour. The dredging in the flour will help to give a little bit of coating to the beef, as well as thicken the sauce a little bit during cooking. So just dredging here. Okay. I'm gonna add these to the hot butter that's now bubbling. Okay, and I'm going to season with a little bit of salt. All right, I'm going to let these now brown for a moment on this side. And then Okay. <laughs> Non lo so. Mm, sono tutti aperti. No, in cinese mi sento male. Vabbè, ok, sarà lunga. Ok. Yes, sir. So, now these are brown. I'm flipping here. Just going to flame them. Get more salt on this side. Ok. And while that's browning, I'm going to turn the hood back on for the alcohol. <laughs> okay, so you can see the butter is starting to brown a little bit on the sides. The meat's brown. So once again, we're adding in our Barolo. Yeah, that's just okay. Mm. <laughs> that the alcohol will naturally burn off. And now the alcohol burned off. So we're going to flip it again once. In the alcohol. I'm going to turn the lid off because the alcohol is gone. Okay. I'm going to add just a touch of broth here to even out the flavors of the wine. <clears throat> okay. 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 Okay.
Um, to go on the side, I just have a few roast potatoes here that um, I've got, I'm just turning the, the, the pan on to, to heat them up. So these, you just kind of want to flip every, every moment or so. The sauce is going to reduce a little bit. I'm just going to turn the heat down. And those will be ready in just a moment. Okay. I'm going to introduce the first barozo. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So I we need the waiting. <laughs> oh, eating. Okay. Okay. No, 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 I got it from Aldo. Um, so it's uh, showing the, uh, the Barolo, the Barolo wine region. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of like focused on the, the southern part of it because uh, that's where Aldo is actually based. So um, it's hard to zoom in on the camera, but basically Monforte d'Alba is right here. Right on the on the south the southern part of the Barolo uh, uh, wine region, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then there's this um, area called Brico San Pietro. San Pietro, yes. Brico uh, San Pietro, uh, and that's yes, where, um, right? Uh, most of my vineyard are in this area called the Brico San Pietro, and with these grapes we make the first Barolo, the classic Barolo. This is a blend of different vineyard. And uh, all the grapes arrive, arrive from this uh, crew from Monforte. And uh, every year of the, this wine, we have uh, three, four kind because during the harvest, we separate all the vineyard. We have uh, the same fermentation, but are separated. And there are, and each wine of this kind have a different holding. It's possible some part stay in barrack and some part stay in barrel. About two years in wood, we go out on the wood and we taste and we decide what is the best. It's possible to make this wine. We use three kind of this wine, or three or four. It depends. Every year <clears throat> change the personality of the different vineyard, and the, for this change, it's possible one year have a, le a little bit more barrack, and the next year more barrel. It depends. Every year we try to balance it a little bit of this wine. Um, <clears throat> this Barolo, all the grapes arrive from the Ara Homo Porte. Uh, and the next and the last one kind arrive from Serra Lunga, is another village and uh, a very different Ara, and but it's not a blend. And, uh, the one is from the famous crew from Ginestra because are the vineyard of my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law, some years ago, was one of the boss of Paolo Conterno from Ginestra. Some years ago, he decided to divide it from his brother and take uh, some part of vineyard in this famous crew from Monforte. Me, I'm very lucky to, I was just mired because uh, in this crew is impossible by some grapes because uh, all the property of this crew are from uh, Domenico Clerico, Conterno Fantino, Elio Grasso. There are no people, they sold the grapes. Me, I'm very lucky because uh, I'm married and uh, my wife have uh, 3.5 hectares in this Zara. It's very special. <clears throat> this is the blend, the black label is uh, at the best uh, exposition near my house and are uh, the older vineyard. For Langen and Biolo, we use uh, the younger for this Barolo at the same exposition, but uh, the, at the older uh, vineyard. Barolo, 
uh, more fruit, more, more powerful because uh, me and other winemaker, we have uh, more and more cure for the grapes, for the vinya, because the most work and not in the cellar, but in vinya. For example, during the uh, holding, one time during a year, I move and cleaning the wood. We don't have too much work because the wine are good. We don't need the work. It's naturally. We need the only waiting. Are you to me? <laughs> okay, so finished up waiting here. So we have our fillet with our roasted potatoes. I can't, once again, I'm afraid to let the sauce run. But um, oh, that's beautiful. Here is our beef fillet. Aldo. Hey, bye bye. <laughs> You're the winemaker. Tell me if I did a good job. You did well with your wine. Ma sicuro che l'hai fatto, è un aspetto stupendo. Buonissimo. Buonissimo. Quando è che la facciamo di nuovo una degustazione così? Perfetto. You want to cook the fillet to medium rare. Other than that, it just gets really tough and you, it's almost like a waste of meat a little bit. It's difficult for a chef to cook a fillet more than medium rare. But um, I just finished off the sauce and then drizzled a little bit over it. Here, I like, you know, polenta is good. Potatoes are really good. You want something that'll soak up the sauce after because the sauce is really good. And the Barolo just gives it a really nice flavor. Today, to this evening, I used the... Um, the Saralunga Barolo, yes. it was what, of the three, what my hand fell on. And um, I think it really added a nice, when I tasted it, it added a really a nice flavor to the dish and I'm happy with it. So yeah, How did, uh, did you, were you cooking Sheila? I didn't, I didn't see while I was, I was busy making sure I didn't overcook the filet. <laughs> you know, I, I cooked, um, I cooked the dish before, like before the, the start of the Veritalk, so. Oh, okay. It's good recipe, yeah. I like it. Mm. Well, Patty, did you make it? Uh, 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 in Florida? Uh, lui vuole. Eh, sono troppo contenta qui. Sì. No. Sono contenta qui. Dai. Non vi I know, but pa Patty was um, trying to decide what she's, she's to buy for uh, to pair with um, these wines. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, Oh, good. Yeah, that's really good. But uh, also, mm. what, um, what, what cheese would you pair with the Barolo? What, what the cheese? cheese? Yeah. Uh, okay. A strong cheese normally with Barolo. We use a strong cheese with Roccaverano, Oppure Castelmagno, but here we use, lo usiamo anche col miele, come si dice? In forma, we have strong cheese with honey. Mm. Understand? No. Uh, Pegaglielo tu. No, um, here it's really common. Cheese is not so much an appetizer as almost kind of comes after the meal. And so it's really common to serve cheese with, with honey as well. And as um, also, especially in this area, a local jam called Cugno, oh. which is made with um, the grape must. And then we add in uh, quince, hairs, I have to translate in my head, um, dried figs, nuts, and then various spices. And then it all gets cooked down. We start off, if you see here, this range has six gas, six um, burners. We start off with stock pots that are about this tall and I don't, my head, my arms don't reach around them. We start off with six of those. And by the time the cuño is finished, we have two left. So it reduces by three times if my math is right. And it becomes just this natural thick jam. And that's really traditional with cheese as well, I think, right? Uh... <laughs> no, 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 no,
perché noi facciamo sempre con mosca. This year, here at the restaurant, we didn't make it because um, we always make it with moscato. Ah, and con moscato. this year, the moscato was not in season with the quince and the apples. They were too ripe, they were not ripe enough. They were not, so we couldn't, we didn't make it this year. And now we're running out and it's only oh, okay. February and we're sweating. Because in Maiara, normally they use uh, dolcetto grapes. Oh, okay. We've used dolcetto. They use dolcetto Sorry. grapes because when they reduce uh, dolcetto, have less acidity and uh, less tanning than the other. And when you boil it, you have a uh, more more sweet than Nebbiolo or Barbera. Ma noi usano tanto il dolcetto. Perché ha meno acidità, meno tannino. Tu concentrandolo, rimane molto più dolcissimo. Proviamo. Ma non proviamo, perché ormai è finito. Un po', va? So, just to clarify, Jackie, you're making the zabaglione now, right? Yes. So, and our last recipe is a dessert. So, we started off, it's zabaglione is kind of like a custard. It's best made at the moment. And it's basically made with three ingredients, eggs, sugar, and uh, alcohol. Uh, some people use Marsala, others use Moscato. This evening, I am going to be using the Nebbiolo. Um, it gives it a little bit of a purplish kind of color that's a little fun funny, but um, it's delicious. So here I'm using pre-pasteurized eggs for security's sake, however, you can pasteurize. The, the eggs will pasteurize because we're gonna be cooking it now. So we are gonna use equal parts of the egg yolk and sugar. I have a, boy, a water that is coming to boil. We're going to be cooking it in a bagna maria, in a bagna marie. And um, I'm just gonna be adding in now my wine. So I'm just whisking in my wine to the egg, egg and sugar. Okay. Interesting. And it's a little bit liquidy. The recipe will be on the blog this Saturday. So keep an eye. When my water comes to a boil, <clears throat> almost I'll add it. So I'm just putting it in and now I'm gonna whisk, whisk, whisk until it's cooked. So if we, I don't know, do we want, do we want to taste another Barolo or okay. are we good? Yeah. Yeah, uh, um, we wanna, we wanna taste the Ginestra. Okay. Okay. So uh, I was uh, showing um, on the map where, uh, where this wine comes from. So it's from the, the town of uh, Monforte d'Alba, which is what at the bottom, um, where the, um, the it's the same town as the first Barolo that we tried, and just over a little bit, um, a little bit east is where you see the the blue, uh, the, the, the light blue area here. That's Genestra, and that's um, and that's the, uh, the this crew, this really um, highly sought after crew that makes um, that. Uh, makes Barolo Ginestra. Okay. Uh, Barolo Ginestra, uh, all the wine you think uh, we tasted first have the same label, very similar. But Ginestra and Serra Lunga, I change. For example, Ginestra, we use the hand of my little girl because I become deadly in 2014. And this year I become daddy for the first time. And I want to make a wine for my little girl and use the hand. And uh, because this is the, for me, is not wine for the heart. Uh, this is a singular vigna. We don't uh, have a other vigna, it's not a blend. And uh, stay only in barrel. Some people tell me, what is your favorite? For me, is not okay because for me is this because this is is my is my girl but uh, i think uh, ginesta is a very special group for monforte very stronger very powerful than uh, other me i'm very lucky because uh, i my wife has some vinya and uh, for example for this next uh, the last uh, wine is from sarralunga 
and uh, me, I rent this villa because here it's impossible to buy something because people are become crazy. People are from USA, from China. They have a lot of money and they want to invest here. And for these people, it's not a problem to pay one million, two million, three million for one hectare. For me, it's a problem. For these people, it's not a problem. And uh, uh, me, I'm very lucky because my family have uh, 7.5 hectares in the Arab Barolo. I'm very lucky because for me to buy something in this period is impossible. And uh, Ah, okay. okay, so the um, once the egg has been cooked, just getting out the silverware here, once the egg has been cooked, the zabayone has a very frothy, a very frothy consistency. You can see it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit, um, soft still and it comes out not quite as hard as a mousse but it comes out a little bit um a little bit soft and the wine i i like it with with red wine it's not really super traditional but it you can almost taste the tannins a little bit coming through and it's really good served over a classic hazelnut cake that's traditional from the area you can serve it over gelato over ice cream yes it's very good and it's also very good with cookies. Just dip cookies in there or eat it with a spoon like we're doing now. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's my three recipes. <laughs> and you, you, you added uh, the doliani, Jackie? Did you, did you add the doliani? Did you add the uh, doliani? No. no, I used the nebbiolo. Oh, the today. nebbiolo. Nebbiolo. The doliani was in the risotto, I decided this okay. evening. So. <laughs> Yeah, in this we did the Nebbiolo, um, but I think you could also use a Barolo in it or, you know, would work well as well. What a pity. Gotcha. <laughs> and uh, for finish, the last Barolo from Sara Lunga. For Ginestra, we use the end of my girl. For Sara Lunga, we use the different face of the moon because me, I'm not, I'm a, a small seller. And for more work, we look the moon. For example, when we decide to put the wine in the bottle, we look the moon. The best period is in the old moon, not in new moon. This is the old traditional in Mayara. My grandparent tell my daddy, and my daddy tell me. Uh, for my work, we don't pasteurize the wine. We don't uh, kill the wine. The moon are very important for some work. When we put the wine in the bottle, uh, or we need, we need the, in the period of the old moon. But for some other work, we look the moon. For example, when I need to clean the wood for, I need to clean the wood and I need to put out the uh, <coughs> Normally we, we use in the period of the old moon. For some work in Vigna, for example, to cut the plant during the winter, we look the moon in the new moon because the plant are more stronger when I cut it to return to life in spring. If I cut the plant in the uh, new moon, is uh, more stronger because me, I prefer the plant have more stronger. After, if they have some more grapes, no problem, I cut. But they are no stronger and they have no grape. For me, it's impossible to take a grape for another to put another. And uh, me, I look and uh, where in the cellar where I work, we look more. Me, because me, I'm a little winemaker. I not pasteurize the wine. My wine are life. You, you buy today and about one year change, but not industrial wine. And uh, this is from Saralunga. It's only one vigna. I rent this vigna. I don't use the name of the crew, but the crew is Ceretta. I don't use the name of the crew because if the boss decided to sell this vigna, for two, three, four million of euro. Okay, we are free. I'm go. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to use the name of the crew are very difficult. For the name, with the, I use the name of the village because uh, if I buy about some year grapes or I rent some vineyard in another 
crew, you don't change the name. This, if I use the name of the crew, it's possible, but here we don't have. And uh, I prefer use the name of the village. This one is different because the soil are very different than the other. In Montfort, the soil are more stronger than Serra Lunga. Serra Lunga are more spice than Montfort. Montfort are more aggressive, more tanning. Serra Lunga are more spice. Uh, mo mo molto speziato, vaniglia. More spicy, a more bit more spicier notes. Okay. Spicy notes. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And uh, this wine stay only in barrel, no barrel, only barrel. Some of you have some question? Yeah, is there any, any questions about the wine? Uh, with, the, um, with the Zabayona, what would you drink with it? What would you pair it with? Zabayone, I think um, to pair with it, um, you know, I think kind of to play on the wine that you use to cook it with would be fun. Um, if you go, if you use the Moscato, try it with the Moscato. In this case, I, I think it would definitely go with the Nebbiolo or even maybe up a step into the, into the, um, into the Barolos as well. Depends kind of how you how you have it. If you want to have it with more of a dessert, so you know gelato or, or cake too. You want to think about how the creamy gelato effect or the the you know a crumbly cake kind of um, that's maybe a little less sweet as well to temper the sweetness. It is a sweet dish. It is you know um, like I said, egg to sugar ratio is is one to one. So. Um, it, it does come off sweet as a sauce in and of itself. Yeah. <clears throat> well, one other one, Jackie, for you. So um, you said Banya Maria. When you make polenta, do you use a Banya Maria? Um, you can. Uh, personally, I don't. Okay. I prefer just to stir it a lot and keep an eye on it. Um, mm -hmm. It's just one less pan I have to clean <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> So I prefer to um, I prefer to just keep an eye and keep stirring it and keep <laughs> making sure the bottom and um, and just keeping an eye on it and you know hey if it does burn on the bottom you're just careful how you take it out and you leave it sit so it's not <laughs> yeah but uh, yeah any yeah. any other questions for for Aldo or it's Sheila. These wines are all available on the website, verovinogusto.com. And I'm glad I, I get to come bug him for the wine. <laughs> when I run out, I'll just show up at his door. Hi, Aldo. <laughs> yeah. so, are you gonna yeah. eat? Are you gonna eat after once we're done? I'm gonna I'm gonna eat. I saw Aldo was munching away earlier. <laughs> I'm gonna Sorry. eat. You were you were eating earlier. No, and it's so okay. Now no problem. Yeah, I'll be I'll be eating when we hang up and um but yeah. No. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well um does anyone else does anyone have any other questions or uh, comments? Hi, this is Cheryl. Yeah. I, enjoyed, yeah. I enjoyed today very much and thank you for the cooking demo and the wine exploration, wine tasting. I didn't have any to taste. I, I caught the email very late and uh, thank you for the suggestion on which wine to start with. I do love red wine. Um, I know what I like in my mouth, the taste and what have you. So I was thinking that same one that I would start with was the uh, ne Nebbiola. Nebbiola. Okay. Very Thank nice. You. Hi, um, I'm Patty. Aldo, I'd love to have you taste my California Dolcetto someday. <laughs> I'm waiting for um, a bottle. You have to send it to when I mom. come to visit. I'm waiting your bottle, please. I want to taste. Uh, I, 2019 came out killer, but I only use, you know, French egg oak barrels and we have a unique it's kind of it's dolcetto but it's we have a california process but i, I would love to, to share it with you when mm -hmm. i come to visit and 
Thank you, Sheila, for putting this together. It's so lovely to see my daughter. And yes, I miss my chef. You guys would not believe what I eat. <laughs> you would not believe it. So, oh, Jackie, the food looked fabulous. I love Zabiel. Oh, I, the whole thing was wonderful. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Patty, oh, where's, your, where's your daughter? Thank you. thank you so much. That was so interesting. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Yeah, how, um, Pat, Patty's uh, Patty's dolcetto. We we sell it as well. Um, oh. It's uh, uh, the winery is called Ojai Pacific View, so you can find it on our website. Um, we uh, we also like to honor um, with March, you know, right around the corner, and it's Women Histories Month. We we like to honor our, our women winemakers, and we have a, a woman uh, woman want winemakers set as well that uh, you might you might be interested in trying. Um, yeah, the yeah, that includes um, a Patty and Jackie's Dolcetto. Yeah. I'd yes, also like Jackie. to thank my, my workplace, Trattoria Risorgimento, for loaning me the kitchen tonight. Yeah. And um, I really appreciate that for, let it, for them letting us host this event here and be here this evening after hours. So, who's, the tech um, guy? who's the tech guy in the back? No I don't recognize him. Yeah, he did. He's just back there. So, um, <laughs> yeah, if, you ever, if the travel opens up and you guys find yourself in Trezo, come on. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, it's a real like you'll uh, t I'm talking with Jackie, um, especially when I visited her last month. I, I found out really how um, it's it's uh, it's a, a, a local favorite. So make sure you, you go and visit next time you're in Piedmont. And th thank, thank you also, uh, um, Jackie, please uh, thank, thank the owners um, of the Trattoria. That was really nice that they, they let you use the kitchen. And thank you, Aldo, and thank you all, all yeah, uh, everyone you. for joining. <laughs> I, hope, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. i uh, love to hear your uh, your feedback on the wines and also the recipes um so thank you have a, a nice uh, rest of your Sunday. Ciao, ciao. yeah good one thank you thank you everyone bye 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 b